Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. Today, we learn about a fundraiser that's coming up soon here in Quincy to benefit the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, we've got some hazy sunshine, 77 degrees right now. It'll be a beautiful day today, lots of sunshine, nice and dry and mild with highs in the low 80s this afternoon. A little bit of smoke in the air later on this afternoon from the wildfires out west. Temperatures tonight will drop off into the mid-60s under clear skies. And the last weekend of July looks very nice, mainly sunny tomorrow with highs in the low 80s. Just a few more clouds on Sunday, still dry. Sunday's highs again in the low 80s. And a little gray and damp on Monday, especially in the morning. Could see be some showers around on Monday with highs in the mid 70s. Looks like a big warm up into next week. So enjoy the next few days. Again, we have sunshine and 77 degrees in Quincy right now. Checking out the news for you today, a group of Quincy elected officials are calling on the MBTA to make the Marina Bay Ferry Service free while the red line is shut down in September. Representatives Bruce Ayers and Tacky Chan, Senator John Keenan, and Ward 6 City Councilor Bill Harris have all sent a letter to MBTA General Manager Philip Eng requesting the free ferry rides and also requesting that the T expand the ferry service and use a larger vessel. The red line will close between JFK UMass and Braintree from September 6th through the 29th for work on 18 miles of track. The T says the shutdown is unprecedented but necessary in order to remove 20 slow zones and reduce travel times by at least 24 minutes. The ferry operates from Squantum Point Park in Quincy with stops in the seaport at the aquarium and Logan Airport. The T bought that ferry service from the town of Winthrop last year. The newly formed citizens group called A Just Quincy is moving ahead with plans to mobilize residents after recently failing to gather enough signatures to repeal the salary increases for the mayor and city councilors. The grassroots organization released the results of a poll this week of 600 residents indicating support for a plan to replace the city council in next year's city election, impose term limits on Quincy elected officials, increase fiscal responsibility, a residential tax exemption, and concern about a possible 99-year lease of Granite Links to Quarry Hills Associates. Now, the group also celebrated their repeal, the raise effort, by gathering just over 6,000 signatures in three weeks, although they were falling short of the almost 8,000 signatures required to repeal those pay raises. The Quincy Community Development Department is receiving some national recognition for its efforts in supporting homelessness prevention and affordable health care. The department was praised by the National Community Development Association at their annual meeting in Cambridge, also honored by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for supporting Father Bill's and Main Springs' new Yaki Housing Resource Center and Bannock Community Health Center. Quincy Community Development Director Sean Glennon accepted the honors along with representatives from Manit Community Health Center and Father Bills in Mainspring, along with other members of his department. Now, the department also won the John Sasso National Community Development Week Award for a record 12th time. Some students will be receiving some special care packages full of personal hygiene items when they return to classes in Quincy in September. This past week, members of the Quincy Public Schools Youth Works program spent two days assorting and packing over 1,100 care packages full of soaps and toothpaste, shampoo, feminine hygiene products, and more, all in partnership with the Needham-based nonprofit Hope and Comfort. Those packages will be distributed to students at the Snug Harbor, Broadmeadows, Point Webster, and Southwest Middle Schools. Supporters say the kits will help those students experience better health, confidence, and increased school engagements. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism holding a Stars of the Spectrum Music Festival in Quincy next weekend. We'll learn all about it next.
Welcome back. The Doug Flutie Foundation Junior Foundation for Autism is holding a Stars of the Spectrum Music Festival at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy next Saturday, August the 3rd. It's going to be a great day and we're going to learn all about it from Elizabeth Monroe and Stefano McCauley because they're going to be there. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Good to meet you both. Appreciate that. And looking forward to learning, Elizabeth, a little bit more about the foundation, first of all. Definitely. And then definitely about this music festival. we we'll be rocking the Veterans Memorial Stadium all day next Saturday, yes. right? Uh, so we, let's start first with the, uh, the history about the foundation itself, if we could. Yes. So the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism was founded 26 years ago. Wow. Last year was our 25th anniversary year, our big celebration year. Um, it was founded by Doug Doug and Lori Flutie when their son, Dougie Jr., was diagnosed with autism when he was three years old. Um, Doug actually used some of his Flutie Flakes um, proceeds to start the foundation, and we've been going strong for 25 years. Right. So we directly help people and families with autism live life to the fullest. Sure. And how do you do that? What are, what are some of the services that the yeah. foundation provides? So we provide direct financial support to okay. people and families with autism. Um, through grants, and we also provide community grants to autism-serving organizations and partners who provide those direct services to the autism community. Okay, and who's eligible to receive those services? How does that connection happen? Yes, so we have a couple of grants throughout the year where people and families are um, able to apply directly on our website for direct financial support, and we also have multiple community grants throughout the year where these direct service, feet-on-the-ground organizations in your community are able to apply for grants and funding. Do you have any sense for how many people the foundation assists on a yearly basis? Yes. So we, um, thanks to our community partners and our grant organizations, we touch the lives of around 10,000 people really? and families with autism Just in Massachusetts? every year. No, we're no. actually nationwide now. Oh, okay. So we are very active in Florida, which is where the Fluties currently live, yes. and we're kind of all over. We have a huge um, Flutie 5K for Autism movement as oh. well, besides our music endeavors. Oh, okay. We host Flutie 5Ks across the country, and we do make an impact nationwide now. Very good. So that's, uh, you've gone international, but you're based here in Massachusetts, right? Yes. Right in Framingham. Um, and have you seen, you know, progress over the past 25 years in the way autism is approached, say, from society and also from the healthcare community? Oh, definitely. There's right. just been so much more awareness that's mm. been built. When Dougie Jr. was first diagnosed, the whole reason that Doug and Laurie started the foundation was because no one knew how to treat autism. Yeah. It was a brand new diagnosis and now there's again much more awareness and it really is a testament to where we are today with our event, Stars of the Spectrum. These people, they're ready to take the stage to show you what people with autism, what they can do. They're ready to share their stories and their voices and talents with the world. As a matter of fact, you've brought one of the stars with you today in the form of Stefano. <laughs> Stefano, thanks for coming. Appreciate the opportunity to meet you and uh, learn your story. My pleasure. Yeah. So you are one of the stars. So you you were musically inclined, yes? I sure am musically inclined. Okay. I sing and play piano and guitar as well. Okay. And you'll be performing at the festival? That's right. I'll also be the honorary musical MC. Oh, really? Okay. So what is it about music that, that uh, energizes you, you know, that, that makes you happy? I've always loved to sing and do music since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Like. When I was one, when I was a toddler, I always loved listening to What's Love Got to Do With It by Tina Turner. <laughs> Very good taste. It's a beautiful song, yeah. And I listened to more and more songs as time went on. Okay. Is there music in your family? Are there other members of your family musically inclined? Well, my uncle used to make compilation CDs. Oh, really? Okay. I understand you're going to school specifically for music, is that right? I attended there, actually. Oh, okay. I went to Bunker Hill Community College and got an associate's degree in music. Oh, okay. Very good. What do you hope to do in the future with that degree? Well, I still want to perform anywhere I go. Okay. <laughs> Including at the festival, right? Of course. Yeah. So what exactly will you be doing? This is, uh, we should tell folks, it's Saturday, August 3rd, uh, 2 p.m. at Veterans Memorial Stadium. So what's your role uh, at the festival? I will be an honorary musical MC as well as singing in Spectrum of Sound. Oh, okay. What are you going to be singing? We're going to sing songs like What We're Made For. We're going to sing like some mashups. We're going to sing a special version of Lean On Me with Faith Evans, too. Really? So, what type of music? And will there be bands to go along with this as well? Yes. 
the Doug Flutie Bros Band. Oh, very good. Is it actually Doug Flutie's brothers? Well, oh yeah. Oh, it is. It is. Okay. So the big question, Elizabeth uh, Stefano, will Doug Flutie be at the festival? Of course. Oh, he will? Yes, he oh. will. he's part of the Flutie Brothers Band. He'll be drumming with Spectrum of Sound, our inclusive choir of autism yeah. self-advocates. They play a Boston mashup that you, you don't want to miss. Okay. So he'll be drumming for that. Um, and yes, he attends the, our shows every year with Laurie Flutie. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just want to read kind of the subtitle of, of the festival because it really, it, it's pretty self-descriptive as to what you're trying to do. Uh, join us for the nation's largest music festival by autistic artists. That alone is pr a pretty bold statement. Is that, is that true? Yes. Okay. So we will have nearly 100 people with autism taking the stage to either perform or be an MC. Really? Okay. Uh, and celebrate and elevate voices and stories of people with autism. So how will you do that? How will the festival do that? Yes. So we work with nearly 100 autistic, talented yeah. artists from across the nation. And they are here to share their music with the world. They've been practicing really hard. And they're really, really talented. So whether you've heard of them or not, yeah. you should come to enjoy this fun day of music. We have special guests, including autistic performer from American Idol, Aiden Boyer. Mm. Um, we have a sibling duo from Florida, Jake and Skye. Jake Velasquez was on America's Got Talent. Uh, we also have some very special guests and headliners who will be collaborating with autistic artists. So we have nationally acclaimed pop funk band Couch, who originated in Boston. Mm. They'll be joining and collaborating with autistic artists, as well as Sam James, a singer-songwriter who I I believe it's from Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. He'll be collaborating, and then we have the winner, the first autistic winner of America's Got Talent, Cody Lee, flying in from California. He has a set wow. with his band as well, so okay. it should be fun. Yeah, but how many folks are you expecting to attend? Oh, um, so right now we're creeping in on like 7,000 oh, oh, people wow. attending, okay. so All it right. should be pretty big, and Excellent. we're so grateful for the city of Quincy and the Free Jacks for letting us be at, in Quincy. Last year we were at Fenway Park. Is that this right? year is bigger and better than ever. We, we expanded from Fenway. <laughs> <laughs> You've moved on up, right? Yes. <laughs> um, also, it says the festival is sensory inclusive, so everyone in big bold letters can enjoy the live music and mission-centric vendors and artisans. So yes. explain that if you could. Yeah. So we are very proud to partner with one of our organizations, Autism Alliance, to make the whole festival sensory inclusive. So while it still will be a music festival at its core, there will still be loud music, music throughout <laughs> the day, we're offering accommodations so that people and families are able to bring their loved ones with autism and they can have a fun time. So okay. we have indoor sensory spaces underneath the bleachers that are air conditioned and quiet in case someone needs to go and yeah. relax. We have outdoor sensory spaces, we have bubble zones. Um, all of our volunteers are trained so they will know that this is a concert for people with autism. And we have um, sensory item giveaways as well. So we're giving away fidget toys, headphones, mm. noise canceling headphones, earplugs, and sensory communication cards for people who are non-speaking. Oh, okay. Because the overall mission of the foundation, right, is to help folks with autism live productive, fruitful lives, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, doing this through these avenues. Yes. And you also mentioned our Shop the Spectrum, our artisans, yes. our vendors. Yes. So this is a new endeavor of ours, oh, okay. but we are inviting autistic business owners, entrepreneurs, and artists to be part of our Shop the Spectrum. So fans and attendees will be able to shop um, their like artware, their their t-shirts, whatever they're selling. We have a huge vendor area. I believe we have like 18 really? autistic entrepreneurs coming to okay. sell their stuff. So it'll be a true festival vibe. Okay. Um, Stefano, I understand uh, that uh, you are a performer at heart because when you're not playing a piano or a guitar, you're giving duck boat tours. Well, I don't give the oh, tours, you don't. but I help guests board the ducks. Ah, okay. However, I have narrated a few tours for my friends on special occasions, but I also get to be the Duck Tours mascot sometimes, whose name is Kilroy, who apparently <laughs> was in Quincy. He was the one working at the shipyard during World War II. I didn't even know Kilroy was in Quincy. <laughs> See, it's kismet. It was meant to be. <laughs> um, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Kilroy was a real person. He was an inspector at the Quincy shipyard, and he'd scrawl on the side of the ship after he inspected it, Kilroy was here. <laughs> so there you go. And a fun fact, although I talk a lot, I'm actually good at keeping my mouth shut <laughs> when I'm a mascot. So my mom makes this joke. 
to get me to stop talking, mm -hmm. I should be put inside the mascot costume. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps an extra handy just in case, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so now the duck tours uh, are seasonal, of course. So what will you do after those after those done uh, are done this year? Work in the culinary industry. Really? At okay. a college? Okay. All right. What's some of your favorite foods? Some of them I like uh, spaghetti a la carbonara. Mm. I also like all sorts of things. And I like to enjoy what the season has to offer. Yeah, I know being healthy is, is important to you, right? Yes, yeah. I'm trying to teach the world to use healthier ingredients as my biggest cooking goal. Okay, all right, so that's a, a bold endeavor. Do you think you can combine your two loves, your music and food uh, together? Of course. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, be a performer at a restaurant perhaps or something Ooh. like that? That would be an excellent goal. There you go. And I say, with music also, I like to tell you another thing. I do also have a good ear to detect how songs sound very similar. Hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. The chords and, uh, and the melodies. And, uh, yes. Yeah. Very good. Do you think you'll be a, a composer one day, writing music? Well, I am working on my own song as well. Really? Little secrets. Elizabeth's <laughs> nodding her head like, yes, he's got a lot of talent. Yes. Yes. Indeed. No, all of our stars actually have taken it upon themselves to write their own music. They actually just launched their oh. first ever original album featuring 15 autistic artists. It's groundbreaking. Right? It's called Stars of the Spectrum. Okay. Available on all streaming platforms. And we partnered with Big Night Talent to launch this album. It's doing really well. And they'll be performing the album live on August 3rd. Oh, really? Yes. So Stefano heard the album, is inspired, and he's also writing his own music so we're, we'll hope to elevate your song too when you release it so original music right here in Quincy yeah. very good yeah what would you say Elizabeth are, are um, some of the misconceptions about autism and about people with autism that, that the public should know about yeah so I there are a lot of misconceptions about autism I think that people have mm. that there are people might be awkward or come across as not conversational mm. um, but we are here to break those stereotypes and boundaries. Like, if you come to this concert, you'll see them on stage. People of all talents, all abilities will be taking the spa stage, including non-speakers. They'll be communicating with iPads. We have autistic golfers taking the stage who really? might not be singing, but they'll be golfing on stage. Golfing have, on stage? Yeah, we have a little chipping contest oh, right. on stage. Okay. Um, well, our sponsors are Jersey Mike's and Get Air Trampoline Parks. So the golfers will be doing a little contest with Jersey Mike's and Get Air, and we'll be giving away either free subs to people or free um, trampoline trips. Ah, okay, very good. Yeah. Um, do you have any kind of goal for, for the event and uh, how much you hope to raise and, and talk about uh, what the funds will be used for? Yes. So uh, I would say our goal is, while it will be monetary, it's really mainly to create this one-of-a-kind event that there's not there's not an event like this in the nation besides ours right. we really want to create this inclusive and fun space for people with autism to enjoy it's by autism for autism okay. um, and all funds raised from our generous sponsorships and donations made during the event will directly go to help people and families with autism okay. live life to the fullest okay is, would you say this is your biggest or one of your biggest fundraisers Yes. yes. However, we are very lucky. We have so many other fundraising initiatives that we do throughout the year. There are so many passionate people, and we have a huge, besides our music arm, we have our Flutie 5K for Autism, mm. and we have a huge peer-to-peer -peer, um, fundraising initiative where people host fundraisers for us. They they take on a race, and they'll choose to fundraise for the Flutie Foundation. Yep. So we have many avenues where we are able to make an impact. Yeah, it's, you know, when I when I hear about the, the festival and, and all the different things that the foundation's doing, it goes against common knowledge uh, of uh, folks with autism who would like, you know, kind of a calm, quiet atmosphere without bright lights and loud sounds. So this is, this is turning it on its head. It really is yeah. different for many people. Some yes. people like the loud noise. Okay. Some people don't mind it. Some find it they listen to music in their in yes, their headphones. Yeah. Some it really it's different for every person. Okay, all right, and that's probably one of the misconceptions, right? Is yes. you can't just generalize, right? right? It's called the spectrum because everybody's different. Everybody's exactly. a, diff a different place on that spectrum, right? Yeah. So, and Stefano, it sounds like you like you enjoy both. You enjoy you know the loud and the uh, the exciting, but also you said you listen to, to music in your head as well. Thanks. Yeah. So, going forward, do you think you can use those skills uh, to inspire others? 
Uh, sure. Yeah. What um, would you say have been some of the difficulties that you faced uh, as you, as you uh, deal with autism? Sometimes I had trouble understanding things, mm -hmm. but I eventually got through it. Mm -hmm. And what would your advice be to somebody who is going through a similar experience? Remember to ask somebody for help whenever it's appropriate. Yes, yeah. Uh, possibly through the Flutie Foundation, right? How did you find the Flutie Foundation? How did that happen? Well, I believe my mom met the executive director, Nick Savarez, at a Special Olympics event. Okay. And believe that they'd be able to, to help it with your family as well, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Has it, has it been as helpful, would you say? It sure has. Really? I love the Flutie Foundation. I can't leave it. Do you have to? Well, I love being a member of it. Uh-huh. Elizabeth, is it for folks of all ages? Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no kind of you age out of the system. No way. Yeah. It's there to help whenever necessary. Very yes. good. Uh, so tickets for the uh, festival, how does that happen? Yes. So go to www.flutiefoundation.org to check out our website under our events. Tickets are still available, but they're limited, so get yours quick. Going fast. Yes. Yeah, going fast, absolutely. Are there volunteer opportunities uh, as well? Definitely. The there are? Yes. We have a huge volunteer army ready to go, but there's always time to sign up for more. So yes, if you visit our website, there will be an option to sign up to volunteer as well. Okay. And do you have to have an experience with autism in order to volunteer? No. no. Okay. We will. We have a great training that's introductory yes. and entry level. So anyone, even if you've never worked with people with autism before, we encourage you to volunteer. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, now, going forward after the event this year, what will be happening for the foundation? Yes. So we will be going into the fall, which is our Flutie 5 k for autism season uh, we have I think we already have like eight satellite events lined up and it's actually going to be our 25th annual Flutie 5k for autism in Natick, in Natick. which is Dougie's hometown oh very good okay so will Doug jr. also be here in Quincy for this event no so unfortunately no. Dougie does not travel well oh, I see um, so he will be home in Florida but we are live streaming the event oh, you are. Um, with our television and media partner WCVB Channel 5 Boston very so good. anyone from anywhere can watch at www.wcvb.com Excellent. So hopefully Dougie will be watching online. Okay. Um, how did you come to, to land in Quincy? Yes. So uh, this is our second year of our concert. Yes. Last year was our 25th anniversary, and we decided to go big. We were at Fenway Park. We yep. had 5,000 people staged on the dugout. It was unreal. It was <laughs> unforgettable. Um, and we are growing. So we were looking at venues that had a higher capacity and oh. Quincy was the spot. It's kind of, the free jacks have been amazing. It's been like a blank canvas. We've been able to get creative, build shade tents, build sensory tents. They're letting us really like do what's best for the autism community. It's again, it's like a blank canvas. It's yeah. so much fun and there's huge capacity. So we're here, we're excited. Excellent. Uh, Stefano, did you perform at uh, Fenway Park? Of course yeah. I did. What was that like? It was awesome. Yeah. Like, it's a wonderful venue. The year before, we didn't have as many audience, but we were at the Lincoln Center in New York City. Really? Okay. So have you traveled the country kind of as an ambassador for the foundation, would you say? Well, the only time I really was in a foreign state with Flutie was New York City, but also there was once a gig in Connecticut. Oh, okay. All right. So are there other types of autism foundations, Elizabeth, like the Flutie Foundation? Yes, there, there are, are tons. So as I said, the Flutie Foundation provides community grants yes. to autism serving organizations um, locally that mm -hmm. provide direct services okay. to the families. We don't provide the direct services per se, yeah. we provide the funding. So there are tons of community organizations, autism organizations, where we actually partner with hundreds of them and we invited them to the concert and luckily thanks to our sponsors we're able to offer free tickets to people and families with autism and many of these autism organizations are partaking in that and they're bringing buses of people, oh. they're making a huge community event for their for everyone oh, so right. it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it, I mean I think you know autism really has become more in the mainstream discussion in recent years. Um, I know that uh, the state police uh, recently embarked on a new program to kind of assist officers and folks with autism communicate better in that situation. So it's, 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 take, it's getting notice. Definitely, yeah. yes. The autism numbers are rising yes. every year. Yep. Um, more people are getting diagnosed and more um, 
normally marginalized groups are having autism become more, like for example, the Flutie Foundation is really taking a strong um, stance on helping people and families in minority groups who are culturally, linguistically diverse, yes. who may not be able to communicate an IEP at school or other things like that. So we've been taking a priority to funding um, underserved communities. Sure, sure. Uh, Stefano, have a great time at the festival. Uh, do you want folks to come up and say hello to you if, uh, if they come? Yes, please. Okay, all right. And uh, maybe you'll perform a little song for them too? Yeah. <laughs> Sing their name, perhaps? <laughs> it would be great. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, look for you on the duck tours. Yeah, you'll have to see me working at the duck stop, though. Okay. And your, and your mascot, not speaking. And, by the way, on the day of game one for the Celtics yes. finals, yes. I wasn't in the parade, but on the day of game one, I was working at the Prudential Center location oh. when suddenly... A big yellow bus from Hoop Bus came, mm -hmm. and I got to play basketball at work. Is that right? As well as play on the swing hanging from the ceiling <laughs> inside the bus, <laughs> and then the Hoop Bus staff crossed the side road to the duck stop for an impromptu moment that they gave me. Very good. I climbed on the hood <laughs> of the duck gave a shout out and bounced past the ball from up there to one of the employees who then did some tricks passing it to other employees and even shooting it across the side road for the final employee to alley-oop it. That's available on Instagram. Ah, okay, we'll look for If that. you look at Hoop Bus on Instagram <laughs> and look at the reels. Thank you both, great to talk to you. With a funny basketball joke too. Okay, all right, we'll look that up. Uh, have a great time next uh, next Saturday, actually. Is the Thank festival. you. We yeah. hope to see you there. You It'll be nice. great. Right. Hope to see you there, too. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. It will this weekend, that's for sure. It's beautiful out there today with temperatures in the low 80s, nice and dry this weekend with sunny, warm days and clear, cool nights, maybe some showers around here on Monday. Thanks again to Elizabeth Moreau and Stefano Macaulay for joining us from the Flutie Foundation. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching.